I'm going to take Taryn first, just because I haven't talked to Taryn in a while. So, okay. Taryn, if you don't mind, hop on over to the stream mumble, which yep. I will do now. So, right now, I should be alone in the stream mumble. Oh, there's Taryn. Okay, there we go. And we don't have anybody else right now. It's just you and me. Yep. We, we don't need any of those dudes anyway. I think you and I together can just run a great D&D game without anybody. I completely agree. <laughs> so, Taryn. Yes. Never mind what happened last week. You were with those guys the whole time. You fought the skeletons, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Eldov gets sucked through a door, and the door started to close, and somebody grabbed it and held it open, and everybody else jumped through. What you see next is you're alone. You're floating in a starry expanse of space um, that looks clearer and more vibrant to you than you've ever seen looking up at the night sky in your life. All around you are the wonders of the cosmos, but they all seem infinitely out of reach. Stars and galaxies, uh, meteors flying through the air. Looking around below you, you see various planets. You see the sun of whatever system you're floating above. And, but you yourself feel very comfortable here. You feel you don't feel the intense cold. You don't feel the breathlessness of the situation. And you do feel the sensation of movement. Uh, in this place. You feel you can propel yourself by just the power of your thought alone. But you don't see any of your companions who you were with just a few moments ago, despite what they may say. Um, I am going to try and cast Sending to Eldov. Try to cast Sending to Eldov? Yep. And what do you send? Eldov, this is Terran. Stuck in some sort of starry void, unable to see anything, respond back 25 words or less. And what else do you try? Um, you said I could propel myself with my mind? Yeah, it seems like when you think, when you look at any of the points of light, galaxies and planets and uh, that are in your field of view, just focusing on one and thinking about it, you feel yourself moving towards it. But it's so far away, it would take many lifetimes for you to reach it. Um, hmm. In that case, I believe I will uh, shout and see if there's actually, like, air. Can I hear my own voice or not? Uh, you can't. There doesn't seem to be any air you're breathing. You're not breathing. It just doesn't seem to be hurting you at all. You're, you're, you're breathless right now. There doesn't seem to be a medium through which to transfer sound. So when you speak out loud, you feel your vocal cords uh, working, and you feel the air leaving your body, but you don't hear anything. I'm going to try concentrating not on something I can see, but something I can't see. I'll start thinking about one of my uh, demo planes and see if I can get either to manifest in front of me or to move in a direction that might tell me which way it is. To what end? Like, what is the purpose of trying to move towards To see if plane? I can actually find, like... Again, if I can either get it to appear in front of me or to move... If it starts, like, tugging me in a direction, like thinking about one of these stars, maybe I'll start going in that direction. Okay. And you do feel yourself beginning to move not in any particular direction. You don't seem to be moving towards any particular objects. But when you're focusing on your demiplane, you do begin to move. I'll just continue thinking about that then. All right, then I will move on to Nick. Okay. Nick. Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric happens. Yes. Oh. I, I open What's the Flumph channel, and the first thing I hear is Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric. Why, what uh, are you listen, people? Listen, SGDQ what? is going on. SGDQ is happening. Nick, you're being summoned. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Nick. All right, I'm here now. So, Nick. Okay. You go tumbling into the door after you see Eldov getting sucked through. Khalil keeps it open for a moment. You dive in knowing that if the door closes, the location that it links to will be different. And you open your eyes and lift yourself up off the ground. And you feel as though you're under a lot of weight. And you realize when you pick yourself up, there's a large multitude of snow on your back that you shrug off onto your shoulders. And looking around... You see a very bright landscape. Uh, first of all, it's very bitterly cold. Okay. And fierce winds are whipping around you 
in all directions, and the wind changes directions every few moments, so it's very difficult to shield yourself from the blast of the wind. And looking you, above you, you, you see... You, what was that? You know that I have a warmth ring, right? You're wearing it right now? Yeah. And nonetheless, I, I you, all, you feel I wear, bitter I wear it all the time, but it's never come up before. <laughs> well, you have resistance to cold damage. This isn't going to yeah. do damage, though. Right, right. I'm just saying. But you notice you're on the side of a very steep hillside. And you have the sensation that you've been climbing it for a long time and that you've collapsed. Looking around, you don't see any of your companions, nor do you see the door that you came through. Okay. And you double-check your Ring of Warmth, and it you, you still feel the magic attunement to you. You feel you have that uh, safety net between you and the cold. Mm -hmm. But the cold is still very bitter. It's uh, I'm not sure what kind of environment Orphan grew up in, but it's much colder than anything you've experienced in a natural environment before. Yeah. Alright, so, um... So, I'm, it, am I on a slope? Is there, like, an up and a down that I can see? There is. It looks like you're, you've been climbing this very steep hillside, and looking around in all okay. directions, you just see the, the rocky crags of this snow-covered mountain that you've been climbing up. Looking behind you, you see you, your footsteps uh, coming up, m many of which you've been coming over by the snow, and then, like, the, uh... The long snake-like trail that your tail has left behind. All right, well, I'll keep climbing, I guess. Keep trudging up the hill. Don't want to, don't want to retrace my steps. Yeah, keep trudging up the hill. And you do so, and you start trudging through the hill, through the snow, wrapping your cloak tightly around you as you can. Now, how long do you keep this up for? Uh, let's say ten minutes. About ten minutes. After about ten minutes of trudging, um. You start feeling weariness in your bones, but you seem to be no closer to the top of this mountain. Hmm. There's no, there's nowhere to take shelter, is there? There's no there's no caves that I've seen. Nothing in, in the middle of the, uh, the mountain. You look around, and what little uh, patches are not covered by snow look to be rocky crags that would be difficult to climb. Okay. So if you could, get, if the wind were f were coming from one particular orientation, you could take shelter behind one of these rocks, but. Since the wind is changing directions so often, there does not seem to be any respite. Hmm. Too bad my elemental tumor isn't good for anything. <laughs> I was trying to see if I could like make a uh, an ice shelter like magically, but I'll probably have to do it by hand since I can only shape up to one foot cube. So you're gonna start making a, an igloo for yourself? Yeah, I'm gonna start. You want to start making, um, oh, these only last for, yeah, the crude forms only designate for one minute, uh, so it's not going to help. Um, hmm. I mean, you could use the magic to shape a crude form and then pack it solid with your hands, and it might maintain its shape. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and make some ice blocks that way. Okay, so you stoop down in the snow and you start to begin to pack together ice blocks with which to build your shelter. And after several hours of work, it feels like you've been laboring at this all day. First of all, you look up, but you still see the sun is high in the sky, although it grants no warmth, just light. And eventually you do build yourself a shelter with enough room to crawl inside and lay down. All right, um, I'll take a short rest. Um, just try, try and, now that I'm out of the, like, the biting cold. Okay. And you go in there and lay down. Close your eyes and rest for a little while. Don't actually take the benefit of the short rest, though. Yeah, I didn't think so. All right, and I'm going back to summon. Looks like Air, um, Zook is next. All right, give me one second. I'll be out. Sonic Boom, yeah. Rise of Lyric. I mean, Zook, no, wait, Zook you're yep. ne you're needed. All right, I'll be there. In just Are a we second. still talking about Rise of Lyric? <laughs> Hi, what Zook. is going on? How are you? Um, scared and Zook. alone. Yes. You see Eldov get sucked through the door. Okay. And it starts to close, and Khalil grabs the handle and opens it up. An orphan dives through, as well as you and all your companions. And after a few moments, you are racked with very raucous and very loud noises all around. Very frightening noises at first, until you're able to zero in on what exactly they are. And when you gain your bearings, you're standing on a wooden floor, parts of which are soiled and uh, stained with types of dark liquid. 
And after a few moments, um, you realize that this dark liquid is alcohol. There's traces of rum and wine and whatnot splashed on the floor. And you realize that the raucous sounds you're hearing are the laughter and shouts and music of a tavern. But from <laughs> your position, it seems like an impossibly large tavern with enormous 13-story people and furniture and chairs. Um, and there's constant splashes of food and drink that are tumbling down from the table. It's like you're a mouse in this gargantuan tavern. It extends in all directions from as far as you can see. Your initial landing point here, when you first open your eyes, is immediately diving out of the way of somebody's boot coming down on you. And this boot looks like the size of a castle crashing down. And this is the position in which you find yourself. Are these people, like, appear to be people? Like, I'm, I, like, I'm literally been shrunk, or these are, like, giants? You really can't, I mean, you're the only giant you have point of reference would be Kifas, and these easily would dwarf Kifas. But, I mean, staring up, really the only details you can get are their feet and legs. Okay. You, if you climbed up one of them up onto their laps and made your way up onto one of their tables, you might be able to see their faces. I don't know if I want to climb on a person, but climbing up it doesn't sound like the worst idea. Um... From my vantage point, do I see anything that resembles like a like a exit, <laughs> well, a mouse hole, or anything like that? So you think the exit would be a mouse hole? From my scale, possibly. Okay. Now you don't see any walls from your standing. You get the idea that you're underneath a table in the center of the room. Um, so you start making your way over towards one of the walls. Um, carefully moving in the direction to see if I can see anything that's if, if the landscape changes at all, if it really does seem to go on forever. Uh, and moving carefully is the key point, because as you move across this wooden floor, there are many dangers to avoid. Um, so you, you don't get stepped on or drenched by a splash of ale or whatnot. And eventually you do right. make your way over to the baseboards of the room, and you do see in one area where a hole has been gnawed into the wall as if by a rodent. And it looks just your size. What's the worst that could happen? Um, if I if I make my way over towards the entrance, I don't want to like just shove my head in it, but I do want to kind of make my way over and peek in with my dark vision to see what what I can see. All right, and we'll come back to you. Oh, okay. So I need to switch out. Yep. All right. Later. Oh no, that'll get him really angry. Though. I'm already really angry. Uh, <laughs> now I need so angry. Eldov. Okay. Eldo Eldo. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? Hey, I told everyone that uh, when I come back, you're just going to say, okay, I don't need the rest of you. You're all dead. Well, you might be dead. I don't know about the rest of them, but you might be. So, all right. if you get rolling sucked dice, through this door, and you feel that you land on something not exactly soft, but not exactly hard either. In fact, it crushes a little bit underneath the weight of your chest, and... You feel tiny pinpricks all over your exposed skin, and you realize you've landed in a pitch black pit that's filled about knee high, so you pick yourself up off the ground, you're standing about knee deep in cockroaches. Uh. And the floor, when you try to gain your footing, is extremely slick and slimy, and you just got these uh. bugs all over your body. And that's it? That's it. Alright, well, I, uh... I cast, what's the name of it? Mantle of Fiery Death. I don't, I don't think that's the Vestiture of Flame. Okay, you turn that on. I turn that on. And you so hear? Does any light pop up? It does. Or is it just magical dark? No, I mean you like you do light the pit a little bit. Um, and right. immediately you hear the sounds of cracking and popping as thousands of these cockroaches just burst under the heat of your Vestiture of Flame. How satisfying is the sound? Uh, I can't roleplay your character for you. You're going to have to... Oh, it's incredibly satisfying. Like, are we, are we going to hear a moan here in a minute? or Not that satisfying. Like, notch it back a couple, but... So, you put up your investiture of flame, and you burn the roaches off your body, and you seem to have built yourself a little... Uh, a little ward from the other roaches in the room. And then suddenly, inside of your mind, you hear, Eldov, this is Terran, stuck in some kind of starry void... 
unable to see anything, respond back 25 words or less. Uh, I was inside cockroaches. They're gone now. Aren't you used to starry voids? What do you want me to do? Do I have any words left? I, I didn't write those down. Oh, let's see. That was 20 words. Okay, going to try to escape. And what do you do to try to escape? Okay, so how big is this pit? Because my, my investiture, if it's not magical, uh, can shed bright light in 30 feet and dim light for 30 after that. And looking at the edge of that radius, you see you've built yourself a little ward from the roaches in your immediate vicinity. Looking down, you see the green slick slime covering the floor that your flame is burning away slowly. Um, but at the edge of that 60-foot radius in all directions, you do not see walls. Okay, I'm going to try to press the digitation of the slime to try to clean that up. On your, like, on your person? The the slime on the ground. Oh, your flame is burning it away. Okay, so, so yeah, just what, by what kind of surface of am I flame. on? Um, you get down to expect the surface of the ground, and wrap your hand against it, and you feel stone. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm going to try heading out then. Try walking forward. Okay, just in any particular direction, or just pick one and start moving? Just whatever's in front of me. Okay. And what's in front of you are just this massive pile of bugs in front of you. And as you move towards it, you hear the cracking and popping noises as hundreds of them are blowing up in front of you. And you hear the skittering as they find purchase on the floor and move out of your way. Mm -hmm. And how long do you And keep... after, about, after about 30 seconds, have I seen any changes? You have not. Okay, I'm going to... Hmm... I'm deciding whether this is worth it or not. I don't think so as of this moment. So I'm going to call it a break for now. Otherwise, later I might make this a little bit more. So what I'm going to try to do is... Cast a minor illusion. Okay. Starting off, and I'm just going to uh, yell out. Uh, can anyone hear me? As loud as a lion can roar? As How loud do you think I can... Oh, you can like, make it exceptionally yeah. loud. That's the loudness. Sure, and you hear it, the illusion go off. Is is the pinnacle of loudness as you can make it happen with your minor illusion. That's a first level, or is that a cantrip? It's a cantrip. Okay. Yeah, you hear it, and you wait for a few moments, but all you get in response are skittering noises. No echo? You do not hear an echo. Alright, so I'm starting to think this is either some kind of horrible demon plane, or this is an illusion. So, I am going to... Try to spend a, uh, a little bit of time building up a, a fire around me. Okay. Just using my the materials in my pack. Like, like fire kit, and so on and so forth. So you're going to build an actual fire, you're not going to rely on your investment. An actual fire okay. around me. Sure. And then I'm going to, once that's built up, start casting uh, Identify on the uh, on myself. And then if that doesn't give me anything useful, I'm going to cast it on the ground near me. Okay, so you're going to cast Identify on yourself to start with? Yeah. All right. And that'll take 11 minutes. And I'm done with you now. Go away. Okay. The Dwarven cast. Khalil! Hey, I'm ready for you. All right. It's, it's any day All now. Right, there I'm he here. is. Okay. Hello. How you doing? I'm. I've been better. You see, Eldov gets sucked through this door, and it begins to close. You immediately grab the handle of it, knowing that if the door closes, you will. It won't link back up to that same place. And yeah. without hesitation, all of your companions jump through the door. Uh, including Terran, who was totally with you the whole time. Oh, totally. And then you follow through last, expecting to meet up with your companions on the other side. Where you find yourself is inside, in the middle of a giant marketplace. A bazaar, similar to the one in Kiska. But it's dark. Yeah. There's no sun in the sky. You have a blood-red sky overhead. Is there... Um, and I'm guessing there's nobody here? Oh, it's filled with creatures. Not people. Uh, creatures. Their features, um, imperceptible. They're, they're 
they cover themselves in cloak. They're shrouded in shadow. You can't get a good read on what these creatures actually look like. And the way they move through the streets of the marketplace looks unnatural, like their bones are hinged in the wrong places. The bricks and mortar around you that uh, make the back wall of the bazaar and some of the buildings here are bloodstained. And a very cold drizzle is raining down from above. Not enough to drench you, just enough to... Uh, just enough to be kind of obnoxious, and it's bringing motes of rust along with it. When you look up and shield your eyes from the drizzle, you see chains hanging from the sky. Rusty chains that the water is leaking down. That reminds me of uh, when uh, when we saw Zoot vanish for a moment in, back in the pyramid. And it's just standing here, it doesn't look like any, any of these creatures want anything to do with you. They, you, they seem to be ignoring you. Um, nobody has come up and said anything, no one has accosted you, but you have just this very deep-seated fear, uh, this this paranoia, you get the very strong sense that you're being followed. Call Most importantly, you do not see your companions anywhere around. Yeah, call out for Terran. Just yell out uh, for Terran? Terran, uh, Zook, Eldov, Eric, go through, go, through the, go through the whole list. And you call out their names each in turn, and some of the creatures on the streets, you see their heads turn a few degrees to regard you as you as you yell out their names, but after that, they pay no heed. You wait a few moments, and you do not get a response. Okay, um... Look at these chains overhead. Okay. You said that, that, you said that those things are rusty? Rusted? Are they too far for me to reach? Um, from the ground, yes, but if you were to climb up the side of one of the buildings or so, you might be able to do, like, a running leap and grab hold of one. Um, don't want to do that just yet. Uh, I will... Does it look like there's any kind of end to this marketplace, or does it just seem like it goes uh, on in all directions? From where you're standing right now, it just, it looks like it goes off in all directions. You're not sure all how right, large it is. Try to... All right, then I'll try to climb up and get a lay of the land. Okay, climb up on one of the buildings? Yeah. And as you start moving towards the building and climbing up the wall, you can't shake the sensation that some of these creatures are watching you and taking note of what you do. Although, when you look down at any particular one, they're not looking back. So you manage to get up on top of one of the buildings, and from here, only about five feet out is one of the rusty chains. If you were to do a running leap, you could grab it. I don't want to do that just yet. Um, I, I'll I'll take a look around, get a get a lay of what's, get a better perspective of what's what what what's a, what my surroundings are. And to your mind, before. except for the uh, like alien things that I described, the chains, the the red sky, it looks like the Keyskin Marketplace, um, but you don't see an end to it. Where you would expect to see, looking off to your left, you'd expect to see the gates leading out into the desert. Um, you just see more marketplace stretching out in that direction. All right, I'll make a running leap. Go grab that chain. Okay. And you do. You run and jump from the edge of the building, and you grab the chain. And immediately, getting your hands on it, you realize it's covered in spikes. Ow, covered that's in gonna hurt. thin barbs that you didn't see before, which rip your hands open. Um, try to. Keep hold of it or let go? Uh, let go. Let go and you drop to the ground. Tuck and roll. And you're looking down at your hands and you see they've been scraped and slashed by the tiny barbs on the side of the chain. And you're bleeding and holding your hands open. The rust-tinged drizzle is getting into the wounds. Uh, clench my hands so that the, uh, so that it's, it's more or less covered and then... And as and you do that, a couple of the creatures walking by, and you, you you swear they're they're staring at you as you, as they move by. Pay them no mind. Start walking in a direction. Okay. Any particular direction, or just pick one and go. Pick one and go. Okay. D eight. D eight says. Um... Hang on. Let me actually dig out a D eight here. <laughs> There's a D eight. Uh, two. Um, 
and one is north, northeast, or what I perceive to be northeast. Hey, what are you, what are you looking for when you walk? I'm just looking for something new. Just, it's something new other than the scenery around me. All right, and I'm like done whether with you. it be a okay. We'll come back in a minute. Did you hear the game grumps talking the other Eric. day? That apparently. Oh damn it! Okay. <laughs> You need me to go back over to the other side? Yeah, I just got Eric over here. What are you still doing here? Uh, go talk about Sonic Boom. Okay. No, I don't want to talk about Sonic Boom. <laughs> I'd rather stay here with you. You can't. You have, you have to go right now. Bye. Okay. Hi, Eric. How you doing? Hello. <laughs> you see Eldov get sucked through the door, and knowing that this door, if closed, will not lead to the same place again, Khalil grabs the handle, and all of you dive through to make sure you're all in the same place. You have the sensation that you've been... Not asleep, exactly, but lethargic for some time. You open your eyes and look around. You have the feeling you've been sitting in this room for a very long time, but you couldn't say just how long. But you're not in a room, exactly. You're in a very quiet, almost eerily silent, and very stuffy, dry warehouse. Your back is up against a stack of crates behind you, and you're... You see a path going off either side, and looking around, this warehouse seems to extend in all directions. Just piles of crates and barrels, many of which are crisscrossed with very thick and heavy cobwebs. And that is the, uh, that is the lay of the land when you open your eyes. Uh, am I bound in any way? You're not. You're just sitting on the ground with your back against one of these crates. And it's just me? It's just you. You do not see your companions. Uh... Okay. Um, uh, there's two paths, you said? Well, from where you're sitting on the crate, you see a path going off to either direction, but you see where these paths intersect with other paths um, in a more or less regular fashion, so this warehouse would be laid out like a grid. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, I get up and I start walking about... Uh, yeah. I won't say anything right now, so I just sort of... I, I get up, brush myself off, um, try to get a hold of my senses, and start walking. And you begin walking between these crates, you pass one of the intersections, and you pass between several more stacks of crates and then another intersection, and this repeats itself for as long as you continue to walk in that direction. Uh, do I have any sort of sense that I can? I have access to my magical ability. Uh, or you, do I need to cast something to find out? Uh, no, same deal. You have access to what spells you brought into the hut with you, but you don't have. Mm -hmm. You don't feel a connection to Osprem here. Your prayers will not be heard. You will not be able to regain spell charges. But any spells you already had, you still have access to. All right. Um, I cast detect evil. Uh, okay. That's good. Okay, yeah. Detect evil. And you hold up your holy symbol and say the prayer of detect evil, um, in order to try to suss out the existence of particular creatures around you, and you don't feel anything. You don't feel any. Uh, fey elemental or infernal presence in your vicinity. You do feel all alone. Um, I shout out Taryn's name. And you hear your voice echo throughout the warehouse. Uh, and I go through the rest of my companions, but I'm assuming if I don't hear anything back other than my echo, they're not here. You hear only echo in response. <sighs> Uh, I'm going to cast Locate Creature okay. on uh, Terran. On Terran? Okay. Yeah. And so, you, again, you clutch your holy symbol and you say the prayer of Locate Creature, focusing on Terran, and you feel him, and he's very, very close. Within 20 or 30 feet of you, he's right here somewhere. Uh, oh, fuck, I didn't take sending. 
Uh, these crates, mm -hmm. um, they're just simple, like, box crates, and they seem to be stacked on top of one another, like, they're made of wood. Um, yeah, they're wooden crates. They're not all box crates. You see some barrels. Mm -hmm. Up on the very top of the stack, you see just a couple of uh, woven baskets. And the crates themselves are not of any uniform size. They seem to be of all different uh, shapes and sizes. No particular markings on them either. No particular uh, branding from one farm or another. Uh, can I... Um, I sense that he's really close. Uh, hmm. Can I um do? Can I? Uh, fuck! I don't have investigation. Um, I was gonna say, can I roll investigation to figure out if there's anything in these crates? I mean, you could just pop a crate open. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. Smack a crate open with uh, my staff. And you do, and the crate staff. is filled with hay uh, as packing material. And then when you reach your hand inside, you find glass jars. Dozens of them filled with jam. <laughs> <laughs> they have cork stoppers with sealed with wax, but just dozens of them. And then going to the next and popping that crate, that crate as well, filled with all different flavors of jam. Uh, I look around uh, conspicuously and I uh, pocket one of these uh, jars of jam. Okay. What flavor? Uh, oh. I get to pick the flavor? Uh, I just assumed there would be one given for me. Uh, how about, uh, let's go with uh, cherry jam. And you, do, you find some. And in the third or fourth crate, you find a jar of jam with a label on it with a picture of two cherries, like Pac-Man. Yeah! Wave. All and you, right! You pocket it. And then what? Um, it's close. Let's, um... Oh, I'm missing all spells. Yeah, I shouldn't do that. Uh, cast uh, the spell magic. Cast the spell magic at what? What are you discharging oh. the spell at? And to what end? What are you hoping to accomplish with it? Well, I think whatever I'm looking at is an illusion. Okay. Ultimately, an illusion. Like since I detect that Terran is close to me, that I'm probably just seeing things. So I'll cast dispel magic on where I think he is. Okay. Um, you, and then you try to pinpoint his location, somewhat above you, on one of the uh, up on one of the stacks of crates. You discharge dispel magic in that direction, mm. and you feel the magic leave your body, and you feel the spell target appropriately, but. Nothing happens. There seems to be no magical effects in play at that location. Oh. Hmm. Uh, I'll walk around a bit more. Um, Any particular direction, or just pick one and go? Uh... And what is it you're looking for as you walk? Uh, any sort of ending, like a wall, or so you're looking uh, for one of the walls some... of the warehouse. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm ass I'm assuming that I get the sense that I'm indoors. I'm not like it's oh, yes. just a it's... big empty space. It's, and just it's quiet as a tomb. Very dry and stuffy, as though the air is not circulated okay. through this room in a long time. All right. All right. So you pick a direction and begin walking for a wall. I'm yeah. gonna go get Terran now. All right. No, I he's, he's, he's God. Terran. I. Yes. How you doing? Let's go. Video games. Oh, I'm not dead yet. Should I leave? Yes, you should leave. Get. Right. Go. You're as bad as the All other right. McDole. Wait, what? Okay. McDole didn't leave. Okay, so. You're focusing on your demi plane, and you feel yourself moving slowly in a particular direction, and this goes on for a couple of minutes. And then you get a response to your sending. Mm -hmm. It says, I was inside cockroaches. They're gone now. Aren't you used to the starry void? 
What do you want me to do? Going to try to escape. Huh. Inside cockroaches. That's a new one. Not surprised that they're gone. Um, hmm. Well, I'll keep thinking towards my demo plan. I don't really have a better plan than that right now. Okay. Wish I had a good... Look, give me a second to think here. Okay. Like, out of character. Um, do I have any good way to see if time is progressing? No atmosphere, so I can't watch, like, water evaporate. Uh, cast detect magic and look at myself. Do I see anything out of the ordinary? Um, just the things that you're carrying that are magical, but you no, yourself are not radiating magic, and okay. none of the thing, none of the empty space around you that is magical either. Um, I'm going to take a copper piece out of my pouch okay. and just sort of release it in the space in front of me. Is there gravity or is it just floating there? Well, what's your expectation when you release it? Um, given that I'm floating, I'm expecting it to just be floating there. And you release your hand and indeed the copper piece stays put. So when whatever direction you're moving, it's moving that same direction along with the force of inertia. Okay. Huh. Well... Um, I can only think of one thing to do at this point. I'm going to pull out a piece of parchment and an ink quill. I'm going to sit down for a moment, crossing my legs in the starry void of space, and I'm going to describe Taran was here onto a piece of parchment, uh, place it inside a bottle, and throw it out in the opposite the direction in the void, and then continue making my way towards where I think my demi plane is. And what is the uh, purpose of reaching your demi plane? Why are you headed there? The fixed point of reference. And you're not able to respond to Eldov? Oh, I could. Um, I'll see... Well, I mean, if he has a way out, I'll give, I'll give it a little bit. I'm still not really sure about how time works right now, so... Okay. What's your expectation for how time works? How are you... Do you are you expecting time to be standing still here? Because if you're looking around, you do see shooting stars and whatnot in the background, so you do see right, it's, movement okay. other than yourself. I mean subjective time. I might be in a place where time is traveling much faster or much more slowly. Especially, how long did it take for the response to come back? A matter of minutes. Yeah, I mean, to me, I, I don't know if I'm in a place where t time is traveling much more slowly or what. Well, That's when a you little weird, so. release the bottle when you throw it, it's got some spin to it, and you see it spiraling off, moving away from you in the distance. It doesn't seem to slow or stop. Right. No, I mean, like, other planes of existence, right? Like, if I'm in one place, and then there's some place where time travels at four times the speed, it's on a different plane. Okay. Or to the point where I am now, I'm not sure if time is moving right, but... So you've released yeah, your bottle, just... and you're just going to hunker down and think it out? Yep. All right. And that's it for you. <laughs> oh, then do it. I tweet my support to them. Yeah, that's a, Orphan. That, that's our last day there? Or is... Coming. Orphan, need your... Okay. Welcome All back. You awake from a fitful sleep to find that your igloo has collapsed on top of you, and again, you're laying in a snowbank. You pick yourself up off the ground, and this time, not only have the winds shifted directions fiercely, but you also seem to be looking a different direction. When you look uphill, you see a new direction, a new uh, orientation of rocks and crags in front of you, almost as if the gravity has shifted around you to completely alienate you from your previous path. Uh, so if previously where uphill would have been north, now it looks to be maybe northeast. Okay, well, uphill wasn't doing much to me anyway last time. Okay. So I'm going to go, I guess, um, perpendicular around the mountain rather than up or down it. Okay, so maintain that takes your elevation? Yeah, maintain my elevation. Just go, go forward that way. And you take a few steps in that direction, and after a couple minutes, you realize, again, the gravity has oriented itself so that, it, once again, you're trudging uphill. There seems to be no way around it. Huh. I'll, I'll go downhill for a couple minutes, see if the same thing happens. And for a few moments, uh, it's somewhat of a nice respite getting going downhill. The steps are a little bit easier, but they get leveled out, and then eventually... 
what was once uphill has become downhill and vice versa. Hmm. Ah, let's see. Can I, um, is my, are the remains of my, um, my igloo visible? Yeah. Like, yeah, you haven't uh, moved very far from there yet. Okay. So I'm not like looping around to find the same thing over and over again. No, and it's, it's actually it's pretty easy a... to find reference points. I mean, you could pick one particular crag off in the distance and walk towards it and know that you're not walking in circles. It's pretty easy to navigate. Okay. Um, hmm. So going uphill has not helped me much. Um, I'm going to try going... Let's see. I have some, some key points I could use. I'm going to spend... Three key points is how much I think this costs. Um, let me check. No, four. Four to cast Fireball. Okay, and where are you casting it at? Um, into the snow up in, up in front of me. Up in front of you? Okay. And what's yeah. your what's your expectation? What are you hoping to accomplish? I'm hoping to get uh, through the snow, get get under it. Get underneath the snow? Like I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to burn uh, a path through the, through the snow into the mountain. Okay, and you throw, your, discharge your fireball, expending the key points, and you shield yourself from the brightness and the blast of the explosion, and when the smoke clears, you do see the snow's been burned away, and there's a hole going leading into a tunnel into the side of the mountain. Alright, I'll enter the hole. Okay. And why are we going into the hole? Because uh, uphill hasn't, like, I went uphill for ten minutes and nothing seemed to to change and I went other in every other direction and they all became uphill. Okay. So for that reason, I'm going to try going in a different direction into the hole. And heading into this tunnel, what are you hoping to find? A way back to the hut, I suppose. Okay. Stay here. Okay. Yeah. It's really fast Zook. for turning up high. Zook. Yes. You're next. Let's go. Zook. All right, all right. Yes. Facing this mouse hole in the wall, it's just dark inside. You poke your head in and you see a path leading in one direction. And you step in and you walk it for a few moments and the wooden of the wood of the floorboards beneath you inside of this gigantic wall start to feel crunchy and rocky as though you're walking on stone. And then it starts to get colder very quickly, much, much colder. And after a few moments looking at the distance, you see Orphan coming the other direction. Hey, Orphan! Zook! Oh, oh Nick's actually here. I was like, wait, hold on. Um, Thank goodness you're here. I, I... Where did where did you come from? I came from like a crazy tavern and I went into a, what looked like a mouse hole. I came from the mountain. It's, it's just back that way. Okay, well, there ain't nothing my way except really, really huge people and really, really huge feet. Um, oh, there's, there's nothing my way except for walking uphill through the snow in every direction. Okay, well, uh, suppose we could go back to the tavern. I didn't explore it very much. I just immediately looked for an exit. If you're telling me there's nothing your way, then I guess we go to the tavern. Alright. So that's the plan, the way. to go back to the tavern? Sure. And um, uh, how are you at climbing, uh, Orphan? I walked one foot in front of the other. No, 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 I mean, like, actually climbing. Like, oh, scaling actually. giant people, perhaps. Um, well, I suppose it can't be that much more difficult than running up any other surface. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do the runny thing. Yeah, that'll work. I have a spare potion of climbing, but hopefully it won't come to that. So when you guys no. go back to the tavern, what is it you're looking for? Well, I was wondering how climbable the wall looks, rather than trying to climb on an actual person that might swat me. Okay. Doesn't look like it'd be any more difficult to climb this wall than any other surface. I mean, it's a wooden surface, so... Um, and you're really, really tiny. I mean, I we should describe for Orphan, when you come out of this mouse hole that Zook was talking about, you're standing in a tavern that is gargantuan. You see boots of people sitting at tables that are easily four or five stories tall. You can't even see the faces of the people. They're so far away. Are we, like, like fly-sized or gnat-sized? It looks like you're the size of a small mouse. Okay. 
My question is, um, looking up at the wall that we're looking at, mm -hmm. is there anywhere that looks like there might be a window ledge or something that would be not excruciatingly impossible to get up to? No, I mean, you have relatively decent climbing skill, and an orphan can just run straight up the surface. So between the two of you, I mean, you could scale any surface here. And looking far up above you, you do see what looks to be a windowsill, a wooden windowsill jutting in from outside. Hmm. That's my best guess, I'm trying to get a lay of the land. So you think that might lead us to the others? Or at least uh, one I, other? I, I think that going up there, we may be able to see this room better to oh, see I if see there's another way to go. Since my room connected to your room, I'm thinking that they all might be connected, or at least there might be a path. Makes sense. Shall we make for the window then? Yeah, sure. Let's try climbing up. And what's your expectation right. when you get up to the window? So look at over the room. What are you expecting to see? Well, Zook said we came through a mouse hole, so I'm assuming that there will be other mouse holes leading to other places. Okay. Either that or maybe, like, a, a evidence of just a regular-sized door that we could slip through or under as well. Okay, and what are you, where are you expecting this door to lead? What are you, where are you hoping the door will go? Uh, uh, right, now I'm, right now my thinking is, since I ran into Nick by going through one area... If we can go through, if we uh, keep scouting around, maybe we can connect with the others. Okay. And I'm going to go get Eldove now, and you two can skedaddle. All right. Eldove. He well, uh, just disconnected. He just disconnected. Well, what a jerk. Okay, then I will take Khalil. Okay. Wait, weird. Oh, wow, weird. Okay. Oh, he's back. He's back. Yeah. Oh, he's back. I. Okay. Khalil, uh, how you doing? Hi. Nodal just came back like immediately after he well, clicked I, off the thing. I'll get him next. I've got you right now. Yeah. So you were heading in one particular direction of the bazaar. Yeah. Heading where? Uh, I I said northeast. Bed, okay. judge based on. What are you hoping to no. find? What are you What are you looking for in particular? I'm just looking for a way out of here. So you're looking for an exit up to the bazaar. Yeah. What do you think an exit would look like? What do I think an exit would look like? A, uh, a perhaps a, a thoroughfare to another part of the city. So you're looking for a road that leads to another part of the city. Yeah. Okay. And eventually, you find a road that does not have any uh, storefronts market or any stalls. market stalls on it. Doesn't look like at least to a friendlier part of the city, but it looks like it will take you somewhere else. I'll go in that direction then. Okay, now I gotta go to Eldov. So you can scoot. Okay. <laughs> Eldov! Like, yeah, oh, I'm let's here. Let's go, let's go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Things were pretty gross for you when we last left off. Ah, you know, I dealt with it. And you were spending, you were getting down on the floor and you were gonna spend 11 minutes to discharge your identify ritual at the floor, on correct? On myself. On yourself first. On myself. Um, yeah. And I actually had an idea that I would have had during those 11 minutes, so I have something to do after that. Okay, well, you cast the Identify spell, and you don't detect any magical effects that you don't expect to find. I mean, you find the, the lingering magics from your various attunements, uh, one of which is a cursed Ion Stone of Hilarity. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you detect your Investiture of Flame, which is burning brightly, but you don't detect anything... Well, it's not anymore. Oh, it's not? Well, then the roaches... That's, why I, that's, that's why I lit the fire around me. Oh, that's right. You did light a fire. I actually made a note of that. So, yeah, your fighter, your fire... Well, what are you expecting is will happen to the fire after you burn it in this kind of dank, slime-filled pit? Uh, what that I'm expecting will happen to the fire? Yeah. I'm expecting the fire will just last and burn the roaches, because it's a fire I made. Of course it'll burn the roaches. Of course it will. I mean, you're, you're, you're the fire guy. They can't resist your fire. I have a note of that, too. Yeah, and that that question is actually leading to something that I was thinking about while casting that ritual. Okay. Which is all of this seems really, really gross, mm -hmm. and Destel's thing seems like a terrifying thing that would happen to Destel, which is making me suspect again that this is an illusion that is pure and preying on my fears. Mm -hmm. And I'm remembering that when we talked to uh, what's her name, she said she got into a horrifying room. And then she closed her eyes and thought of her her room and reached behind her for a door and found a door and went back through. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to imagine that I'm in her room in a safe part of the hut. Okay. And I'm going to, like, reach behind me 
uh, and try to find a door that'll leave me out of here. Okay, you stay put. Okay. It's, that's Orphan and Zook! Yes. Okay, let's go. Alright. Okay. Oh, when you said stay put, you mean stay in this channel. Yes, I, I mean stay in this channel. Door. So, Eldo. Okay, yeah. I'm here. You reach behind you and you find a door handle where there wasn't a door before. And you All swing right. it open. Orphan, you and Zook identify a door on the other side of the tavern. You climb back down to the floor and over the course of four or five minutes going across the floor, uh, dodging the, the, the splashing ale and dropping of food bones from above you, you get to the door, which you can very easily crawl underneath because you're the size of mice. But as you start, the door swings open and you suddenly feel the sensation of yourself growing a hundred times your size. <laughs> and then you feel the sensation of skittering horribleness as these roaches from all directions climbing up your legs onto your body and you realize you're looking you're in a very dark place but you see a bonfire in front of you um and next to the heat of the bonfire is eldov and he has his one hand over his eyes and he's reaching behind him and he's hope holding the handle of a door that you've just walked through and met him eldov i open my eyes i say hey oh hey guys how did you get out of your illusion what are these roaches Oh, you know, dinner. Uh, I don't like the way this is going. Wait, did you say illusion? Yeah. What it like? So, what was going on with you guys? I'm guessing Zook was poor as shit. And actually, there was if, no food around for you, orphan. Zook, where you're standing, the roaches actually make a divot, so you're standing waist high in them, and they're not up over your head. Can I get out of this divot now, please? Wait, yeah, I'll reach out a hand and I'll pull him over the uh, the fire that I've made. And you guys get in a, a into the radius of the fire where the roaches are not encroaching. So no, I was <laughs> they're not encroaching. <laughs> so okay, I, I think I was I think on I, a I was on a mountain and every way I went was uphill, and was covered in snow. And I was in a tavern except I was tiny, like tinier than usual. I was like mouse size running around the bottom of this tavern. Yeah, I was. Uh, there were. A lot of really dirty things around me, and then I got a, a message from Destel, which said that he was in the middle of a uh, a starry plane, which made me think that uh, it reminded me of when we were in that room. Remember the little girl? She said she got into a room where she saw horrible things, but then she reached behind her and found a door, and let herself through. And well, I reached myself and found a door and found you guys. So I'm thinking uh, that if the three of us work together, we might get be able to get everyone else. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, does each of us need to just close our eyes and reach behind us and hope there's a door there? I'm thinking the three of us uh, join hands and close our eyes and then reach behind for the same place. And maybe we'll be able to p open up enough doors that we can let people through. All right. All right I'm game. All right. So I'll, I'll reach out for uh, a love's hand. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'll give it. And I take his other hand. Okay. I close And I close my eyes. And you're all reaching backward expecting to find a door? Yeah. Yeah. Hoping for it. Alright, I'm done with all of you. Scatter. Alright. Eric and Eric alone. The doctor will see you now. <sighs> okay. So how are we doing? <sighs> Hello. So last I checked, you were walking in one direction, looking for one of the walls yeah. of this uh, gargantuan warehouse. And mm -hmm. you walk for what feels about an hour, and then in the far, far distance, you see a wall. Cool! All right. All right. I see a wall. All right. Let's go to the wall. And what are you expecting to find when you reach the wall? Window, door, um, anything that can... Uh, give me an idea of what I am, where I am, and where does the where, where does this window or door go? Like, what would be on the other side of it if you were to find one? Ooh, uh, an outside, a it's a way out of the warehouse. Sky, yeah. Looking for the sky. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. You walk up to the wall, and just wooden wall uh, with or wooden beams with plaster in between. And looking down the expanse of the wall, you think you see an entrance far off in one direction. And heading that way, you find a wooden archway and a door. Um, uh, 
the door frame is covered with cobwebs, which you have to use your staff to sure discombobulate before it's usable. But yeah, there's a wooden door standing in front of you that, which suggests it leads outside the warehouse. Um, I like to cast uh, before I do that. Cast um, locate creature again on Fortaren. Okay. And again, you discharge the magic, locate creature looking for Terran, and he still feels very close. He feels he's within 30 feet of you. He's right here somewhere. Burning through all of my spells. Um, okay. One more thing before I go out the door. Okay. Um, uh, I have way too many spells. <laughs> uh, I cast uh, True Seeing as a level 7 spell. Okay. Because it's a thing I need to do. <laughs> so that um, will let you see through illusions and things, right? Uh, this spell gives the willing creature you touch the ability to see things as they actually are for the duration the creature's true sight. Notice the secret doors hidden by magic and can see into the ethereal plane all out to a range of 120 feet. Okay, and you discharge the spell and look around and everything is exactly as it is. You still see the warehouse, the crates, the wall, the door, and the cobwebs. Mm. And what's next? Um... Uh, I'm assuming the crates haven't uh, decreased in quantity as I got into a wall. They're still sort of, like, stacked up. They have not. Absolutely yeah, okay. not. There are just as many of them as there were a few moments ago. Uh, I go... I don't go far. I go just, like, a little ways down. Okay. One of, the, one of the aisles, and I cast Thunder Wave with the intent of destroying as many crates as I possibly can. So you're aiming inward towards the warehouse at the giant pallet next to you? Yeah. And you discharge the spell that was Thunder Wave. Yeah. And you feel it emanate out from your holy symbol, and it blasts through the stack of wooden crates and barrels, and you hear the shattering of glass and the splattering of jam, and hay explodes in the air all around you. And when you the dust settles, you just see the devastation in front of you. Just this, this, at least you don't have to clean up this mess. That's your immediate thought. But your magic affected it all as though it were very, very real. I rapidly run out of magic. Um, uh, yeah, uh, there's not much else I can do at this point. Um, so let's uh, go through the door. Go through the door, okay? Stay here. All right. I wish Eldov, Orphan, and Zook, let's go. Come in. All right. Let's make this quick. I gotta watch this Shadow of the Hedgehog uh, <laughs> play through. Uh, we're just we have it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Eldov, <laughs> not Eldov, Orphan. The three of you link hands, close your eyes, reach behind you, expecting to feel a door handle, and you do, where there was no door before. And you hear it open, very creaky, and... Eric, from where you're standing, yes. you have the warehouse behind you, but looking in front of you, you see a brightly lit bonfire, around which are standing your companions, Elda, Orphan, and Zook. And beyond them, skittering around in endlessly in all directions, a horrible ocean of cockroaches. And you step through. Oh. Uh, Welcome. Hold the door open, though? Yeah, you hold the door open and look back through, and you see the three of you looking back through where Eric came from. You see an, uh, an endless warehouse uh, stacked with crates, barrels, cobwebs. One of the pallets nearby has been recently exploded by a Thunderweave spell. Um, <laughs> and you see just splatters of all different colors of jam everywhere. 
<laughs> hey, what? guys, that sounds way better that than That sounds like a better room. room. Let's go back let's, in that room. Let's go in that room for our next door opening experiment. Uh, All right. It's really large. Like, No, it's fine. Okay. Don't worry but about it. It's right. a lot it's less fine. full of roaches. All right. So yeah, we'll, we'll go through the door. And some yeah, of the roaches yeah, are there. skittering in through to the warehouse to get at the jam. No, I kicked them back the fuck out. They get out. <laughs> <laughs> so the three of you enter the warehouse. Eric, do you keep the door open? Uh, I close the door. You close the door, and the sound of in... millions of skittering roaches is replaced by no, the no, deafening no, 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 no. silence. I let them... Oh, okay. All right. I thought... No, you're all, you're all in the warehouse. Places. All right. You yeah, better yeah, right. shut the door on us. The four of you are now uh, together in the warehouse. Uh, yeah, so... The, the captain is close by. I can sense his presence. Um, yeah, he's I exactly walked, behind I... us. Yeah. Okay. So I walked like, a good you... hour, and he was still near me, so... No, no, no. Uh, Elda, figure this out. He's apparently pretty smart. No, yeah, that's true. So what you do, right, <laughs> is come over here, grab Montezuk there. All right. And, I just uh, assume we've been holding hands this whole time, by the way. This, okay. this is our, our state now. Close your eyes. All right. And Elda will close his eyes to Karn. And reach behind you and think of a door that will lead to the captain. Okay, this sounds good. And that's what we're doing? Yep. We're yeah. Yeah. Alright, you all may scatter. <laughs> like cockroaches okay. Go away. going through a door. PlayStation 2 Khalil! Hi! Hi, hey. let's go! No. They're, they're talking about Shadow the Hedgehog. It took you that long to push a button, huh? It did. Okay. So you find a road that leads away from the bazaar, and you walk it for a moment. Yeah. And it leads to another part of town that is no more inviting than the bazaar, but it's less thinly populated, which heightens the level of your paranoia even more, because now you can't see the creatures who you know are watching your every move. All right, I'm pulling out my sword, and I'm just be like, hey, look, whatever this is, let me out of it now, or I'm going to start breaking things. And what's your expectation? Who do you expect to respond? Somebody. I don't care at this point. Just somebody? Like when Town you would... guard or something. And the town guard does indeed hear your cries. And on two buildings up alongside the road that you're walking, a row of archers with short bows pointed at you. Three, of, three on each building. And one of the guards steps up and speaks to you uh, in... Do you speak Infernal? Nope. So you can't understand what he's saying. Very nope. Well, he speaks in a language that you've heard before and recognize as infernal because you know Orphan has used it. But strangely, you can understand what he's saying. And he says that, uh, you're right, they have been watching you ever since you got into this city. And he starts berating you with questions about what your purpose here is. What do you hope to accomplish? Who are you working for? Do you mean anyone any harm, etc., etc., etc.? The whole time, these six archers are trained on you. I'm working for Captain Terran, that's it. And he, you, Where, is, where they, is Captain Terran? They begin berating you with questions about who is Captain Terran, where is he, what, sh what ship is he head of, and very angrily, very pressing. Khalil answers his, Khalil answers his questions. Like, truthfully, he's not going to lie to this guy. So one of the questions is, where is Captain Terran now? I do not know. I stepped through a door and I was here, separated from my companions. And the guard barks in order and three of the bowmen on one of the buildings knock their arrows and pull them back and are ready to release. And he shouts back down and says, I will repeat the question, where is your captain? And you stand mute, say nothing. He's right here. I yeah. Right where? He's right next to me. Right now. What is next to you? Standing right next to me. He's right there next to me. Well, next to you is a building. One okay. of the town's uh, one of the town's buildings is right next to you. So are you saying he's in the building, or are you saying he's invisible and standing on the street next to you, or? 
Khalil is extremely frustrated. He has no idea what the hell is going on. Right. This is this has got him. This has got him angry as all hell. So how does he respond? Like when start you running. Start running. Which direction? Back towards the bazaar. Continue down yeah. the road you were headed. Back towards the bazaar. Yeah, away from away from where those guards are. And you start bolting back towards the bazaar, and you hear the losing the loosing of six arrows. None of them hit you. You're bolting down to the bazaar, and it's very quick. You manage to get back to the marketplace and get back in amongst the crowd. And you're pretty sure, looking back, that you've lost them. And what's next? Hey, go to go to one of the stalls. Okay. Tell him, hey, where am I? What is this? Where are my Where are my companions? And what is what do you, What's your expectation of the stall? Like, what is it selling? What What kind of goods is this particular merchant peddling? Fruit. Fruit. And you walk up to the stall, looking around, and you see hanging uh, from the top of it on strings. All different shapes, sizes, and colors of dried exotic fruits. The kinds, very few of which you are familiar with. Um, the only ones you recognize are some of the more exotic fruits you see in Kiska Marketplace. And then in front of him, he's got uh, barrels and baskets of fresher fruits for sale. And he asks what kind you want and how many you'd like to buy. You didn't answer my question. Where, where are my companions? Where... Captain Terra and Zook, Elda, and he rattles off the list again. And he asks if any of them like fruit. I'm pretty sure they do. Like, I have one who really, really loves jam. But right now I need to find them. And he inquires as to what kind of jam does this one like. He says he can make any flavor of jam. Just look around. I have fruits from the spectrum of the rainbow. The type your friend has never tasted before. And he's giving you the same kind of sales pitch as you'd hear at any stall in Kiska that sells fruit. What the hell is this? Why am I here? What's going on? This is... This makes no sense. He says, you're here because you were wise enough to buy fruit from my stall. Because you know that I, amongst all the others in the marketplace, have only the finest and choicest of fruits. You are. You're not. Go walk, 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 walk while he's shouting off at, after me. And walk where? Keep walking up the road. Okay. So Keep you're walking... Walking, walking through, Like, which road? Where does, the where does the road go? When you find a road, where are you hoping it will lead you? Uh, the, the road leading to the, uh, the, the, the inn that, that the party likes to frequent in Kiska. Okay. And you, that particular inn is not in the marketplace, it's in the uh, Low Harbor. But you do manage to find it, nonetheless. The road takes you directly there, and you're standing in front of it. I'll walk right in. Okay, and what are you hoping is inside? Uh, Taryn and the rest of my companions. Okay. Alright, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. Oh, he's about, hey. Hey! Hello. Uh, Waiting oh. for McDowell. Okay, so. Hi. Are we all up? Are the we four of you standing in the warehouse reach back for doors, and two of you find them and open them up. Taryn, after could be a few minutes, could be a few hours of floating, you see off in the distance the door to your demiplane. Khalil, where you're standing in front of you, exasperated, looking in front of you, you see the door to the tavern. And you reach out for the handles, but somebody on the other side already has grabbed them. And the doors open up. Taryn, instead of seeing your demiplane, and Khalil, instead of seeing the inn, you see your companions standing inside this vast and endless warehouse stacked with crates. 